So first thing you want to do before upgrading your fuel pump, um, I have this little diagram I made in paint. It's crappy, but you know, you get the idea. Um, so if you have, you know, Nistune or like a stock ECU, um, there's a blue wire with a white stripe that'll be coming from the harness. Um, this is the wire the ECU turns on to activate the fuel pump. So you can just wire that into the relay on the 86 pin and then ground it to the chassis somewhere. Um, or on the car harness, there's a the wiring harness for the fuel pump. There's a black ground wire. You can use that. Um, so this is kind of basically a switch, the relay. It'll turn on the fuel pump when this gets power. Um, and then you'll want to run a wire straight from the battery on a fuse, you know, 30 amp should be plenty. Um, even with two Walbro 450s, that should be enough um, to pin 30 on a relay, just a universal, you know, 30, 40 amp relay. Um, and then 80, pin 87 will go power to your fuel pump, and then you can ground the ground side just to the chassis somewhere. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, super easy. Um, this is a, uh, Someone made this a long time ago. A lot of guys use this. Um, Walbro 255s are a pretty common upgrade. Uh, honestly, though, any more, I would just get a 450. It's only a little bit more. These pumps are a little loud, too. Um, the 450 is a newer design. It'll flow more, a lot more fuel. <clears throat> so especially if you're doing an E85, I would do a Walbro 450. But this is basically like a guide how to do it. You know, use worm clamps and put the fuel pump on the stock hanger. <coughs> so, um, yeah, and, and one fuel pump or even two will fit fine in the stock baffling in the gas tank, just for information. Uh, so this is, you know, when I first did my LS swap, I did a single Walbro 450, because at the time I didn't plan to use the 85 and these pumps are pretty good to like seven, 800 on pump gas maybe. Um, so I just cut the bottom of these, you know, brackets off the stock hanger, just worm clamped it in there. Um, and then this is a three eighths hose. It's very important make sure you get fuel submer submersible hose. Otherwise, you know, it's meant to take fuel on the inside but not on the outside and it will actually like deteriorate inside the tank. So you don't want that. It's kind of expensive, but you, you have to get it. The hose rated for fuel inside and out. Um, I know Gates makes some, this is just three eighths inch here. The barb coming off the 450 is three eighths inch. And then it's just uh, a tight 90 to clear the, um, the body. If you do kind of a bigger 90, it'll actually hit the body underneath the car when you put your fuel pump back in. So make sure you get a tight 90 like this. This is 8 a.m. And then I have, you know, a plastic washer on each side to help seal it up. And then this is an 8 a.m. to 3 8 inch barb adapter. Um, and then this right here is a, a like wiring bulkhead. Um, so I just drill the hole in the top of the stock hanger and fed my wires through. So here's another angle. Um, you can see the wiring bulkhead here. These are kind of expensive, you know, they're 25, 30 bucks. Um, so another way I'll show you later is you can, you know, just run studs up through the fuel hanger and just, you know, put wiring connectors on on the inside and outside and run your wiring out that way. Um, so you can see I upgraded the, uh, the fuel bulkhead fitting here. Um, you can use the stock 5 sixteenths inch um, fuel hose up to about 500 horsepower on pump gas, roughly. If you're making more than that or you're on E85, you know, you probably want to upgrade this to a dash six or maybe even a dash eight, you know, depending on how much power you want to make. And then, you know, the return fuel hose here, you might want to upgrade to do something bigger. And here's one more angle. So th this right here is for the uh, fuel tank. It runs the filler neck. 
Um, and then you got your feed and your return, and then your wiring. This here, I think, actually used to be the return, but I chopped that off and welded it shut, and now I'm using this one because. I don't know, that was the feed. Never mind, never mind. Yeah. On to the next one. So here's the uh, the fuel filter I'm using. It's Racetronics. Um, it has a nice stainless steel mesh screen. So it's you know you could take it apart and clean it out and then put it back together. You know it doesn't need to be replaced. I just have these C clamps to hold it in. This is just where I mounted it. Um, you can see the fuel hose coming from back in the tank. And I use these little C clamps or P clamps, whatever you want to call them to hold the hose so the body so it's not flapping around. Um, and yeah, here's what I was talking about earlier with the uh, studs you can run up through to run your wiring. Um, and at this point, actually, I've already upgraded Walbro 450s, like two of them. So I have a dash 8AN feed and then a dash 6AN return. Um, you can see I use little plastic, I think they're like Teflon washers to help seal it up. So that's pretty straightforward. Then here is my two Walbro 450s. Um, so I have 3 8 inch hose, you know, the fuel submersible hose. Coming off both Walbro 450s, you can tell this is the original one. This is a new one I bought to add. Um, they come up into this Racetronics Y fitting. This is nice. It's two 3 8 inch barbs up into a single dash 8 AN. Um, so that's how I adapted to to fit into the one fitting. And this, this fitting is big enough, it'll flow plenty. I think it's like half inch. And then I have my dash 6A in here. You can see I don't have the the fitting on it yet, but you should get, if you do do like a dash 6A in return, you should get a 6A to 3 8 inch or 5 16 inch, whatever barb, and then just run hose down towards the bottom. Because if you just have the return fuel just dump out way up here, It'll actually kind of froth from what I've heard, um, and you don't want that. So you do want to kind of try to run a hose on your return down near the bottom. Um, so obviously I have an LS, but if you if you still have a VG and you don't want to make more than like 500 horsepower to the wheels on pump gas, um, it's going to be less on E85. But you can use uh, the stock fuel lines the 5 16th inch hard lines that come from, you know, back in the tank to the front. Um, I was able to push 483 wheel horsepower with, you know, stock fuel pressure regulator, stock fuel rails, stock fuel lines. I just, uh, I put a Walbro 255 in the, in the tank and I, um, installed 750 CC injectors, um, on the stock fuel rails. Um, so it'll support quite a bit of power. Um, but if you are on E85 and you want to make more than 500, um, you're probably going to have to upgrade the fuel lines. Um, I don't think they can, they can reach much more than 500 horsepower on pump gas. Um, but yeah, so I, now I have two Walbro 450s back in the tank. They, they're just on all the time. It's wired to like a 60 amp relay, triggers both of them. Um, I have a dash eight AN right there coming from back in the tank. It goes through a Racetronics fuel filter. Um, those are nice, you know, they're, they're not terribly expensive. The filter element, you can actually take the fuel filter apart and, you know, clean it out. You don't have to replace the whole thing. It's nice. It's like a, a metal mesh filter. Um, and it's 10 microns. You want to get a 10 micron fuel filter, um, especially these injectors. These are Bosch 210s, and they don't have a, a mesh screen or filter in the in the injector body. So that's, that's pretty important. Um, but yeah, I just have 
one dash eight an fuel hose going into the fuel rail it comes through the fuel rail and then it loops over into the other rail that's a dash eight an hose and then it goes through this rail out this end and this is dash six an goes into this aeromotive fuel pressure regulator and then i've got this uh, sensor here i can log my fuel pressure and see what my fuel pressure is from my computer um, that's hooked up to the gold box and then I just have three eighths inch hose into my flex fuel sensor there. And um, then that has an adapter that lets it go into a 6 a.n. hose. So it's a 6 a.n. return. So three eighths inch, 6 a.n. It's pretty much, it's the same size. Um, three eighths inch hose is, is plenty, you know. Um, you can make four digit horsepower on three eighths inch or six AN hose. Um, so this is one way to do it, to just loop it in and then come around and go into the fuel pressure regulator. Another way you can take, you know, a dash six AN or whatever hose and split it into two with a Y and go into one and the other side will go into the other. And it just feeds the rails in parallel at the same time. And then you come out the front here and you have one hose coming from this end and it goes into the fuel pressure regulator and then the other hose will go into the other side of the fuel pressure regulator. Um, you see, I just have this one blocked off because I'm only using the one hose to return right here. And then it, the return goes out the bottom. So I mean, ideally, you would have one hose split into a Y and feed both rails at the same time. Like if you're if you're like at the limit and you're making a ton of power, you can have weird issues in your fuel rails where, you know, this side gets fed first. So this side won't have as much fuel. And maybe by the time you get to the end, the pressure will drop a little bit. But I mean, I'm not having any issues with mine and I'm making a pretty good amount of power now. So, and it's on E85, so it needs even more fuel. But yeah, that's pretty much what I got going on. Um, if you are gonna do fuel upgrades on the VG, if you're on a budget, you know, the stock stuff is fine. Just upgrade injectors and fuel pump. Um, I wouldn't do a Walbro 255. I mean, you can get a Walbro 450 for I don't know, it was like $15 more and it'll support a lot more power. And it's a newer design. The Walbro 255 is kind of loud, but I don't know, maybe you're into that. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you're making real big power, you can go to two Walbro 450s or, you know, the Hellcat pump, the Walbro uh, 525. Um, those are a little support, like a ton of power. Um, Walbro 450, depending on your engine size, you know, if you have a V8, V6, whatever, it usually taps out around, I want to say like six to 700 horsepower on ethanol. And, you know, it'll do maybe, I don't know, seven, 800 on pump gas. Um, and the 525 will support a little more than that. Um, they're good fuel pumps. I wouldn't, I, honestly, I wouldn't do the 525 just because of how expensive it is. You'd probably be better off doing two 450s, but yep. Uh, that's all for this video. Just a quick little lesson on fuel upgrades. I'll see you guys in the next one.